Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Your Daily Star Trek News. Today is Sunday, April 10th, 2022. Coming up on the show today, we've got huge Star Trek Picard news as the entire Next Generation Bridge crew has signed up for uh, Season 3. We've got some more teasers and a new trailer for Star Trek Strange New Worlds. The Voyager documentary to The Journey has released some behind-the-scenes footage that you can watch. And sadly, three members of our Star Trek uh, family have recently passed away. Uh, my name is Allison Pitt. Uh, this lovely girl is Simba. There she goes. Uh, and today's show is supported by people like you through Patreon. Uh, find out more and add your support at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. Uh, so... <laughs> For those of you who are listening today, I apologize for the slightly later time. Uh, normally, we do this show live at 2 p.m. Pacific time over on YouTube, uh, but today it's a slightly later time. And for those of you who just tuned in, uh, you will have seen that uh, my cat is not well adjusting to the time either and tried to bomb the show. But, you know, that's fine. Next time, I want to get her to stay longer because, you know, you guys should get to know her. She's... you. Sorry, slight tangent. Uh, she's usually actually sitting right next to me while I do the show. She usually sleeps on the chair uh, while I do this show, uh, but you don't actually um, get to see her very often. So she is a part of the show, whether you know about it or not. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Sorry, I took us off the rail. <sighs> The whole day, the whole day has gone off the rails, um, but that's fine. Um, right, where was I? Oh, uh, yes, if you're listening to this, you should come watch us on YouTube. We do a live. There are fun people in the chat. Uh, and also, we do a poll. We do a poll. We do a little bit of show and tell. And um, we also do a little bit of chat uh, where you can stick around to the end. Uh, I will, at the end of the show, I will be talking about the NFT thing. <clears throat> uh, but I'm not going to put that in the main show because it falls firmly into um, more sort of opinion and editorial piece than uh, than the news, uh, as it were. So uh, stick around for that if you want to, or if you're listening to the podcast, you can uh, rewatch this on YouTube. But anyway, enough waffling uh, from me. <laughs> uh, I need to tell you guys about the poll. So, okay. So, you know, I like to kind of keep it in context. This weekend was Star Trek Mission Chicago. I was not at Star Trek Mission Chicago. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, but a lot of people were, and it was a tremendous amount of fun by all of the pictures that I have seen, and that's wonderful. That's great to see that um, getting off to a great start. Uh, so my question uh, and the poll this week for you guys is if money were no object and, you know, like uh, your vacation time at work is no object, how many Star Trek conventions would you go to per year? Uh, so your options are you couldn't pay me to go. Now, that is a valid option. You might be introverted and not interested. I didn't for many years, and then I got addicted, so whatever. So option number one is you couldn't pay me to go. Option number two is uh, one or two a year. Uh, then another option is three or five a year, uh, and one a week if I could. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you can't get enough and you'd go all the time if you if you were able to. So uh, there's uh, the poll running in the chat here on YouTube. Uh, that's uh, also running over on Twitter. So if you don't get a chance to put your vote in uh, on YouTube, you can go and do that on Twitter as well. And of course, we'll be checking out the results of that towards the end of today's show. So anyway, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with the news. I don't know why I'm pussyfooting around it. There's like one story this week. I mean, let's be honest. I don't, I can never tell if the people who are watching here on YouTube or listening to the podcast, if you are out and about in the Star Trek media generally. However, the story this week is that the TNG bridge crew are coming back to Picard. I'm not going to pussyfoot around it. That was the big, huge announcement. Now, I will admit that I was surprised. This week was uh, first contact day. Uh, Tuesday, theoretically, was first contact day. And unlike previous years, they didn't do a big event. Uh, I suspect that was because of Mission Chicago. Everyone was going out there. But um, they did drop the gigantic bombshell uh, accompanied by a trailer that uh, the Next Generation bridge crew, so let me list them off. Patrick Stewart, obviously, LeVar Burton, Michael Dorn, Jonathan Frakes, Gates McFadden, Marina Sirtis, and Brent Spiner will all be appearing 
in Star Trek Picard season three. We have uh, assurances from the production team that it's not just cameos. They will be an integral part of, um, of that season's uh, events. So um, great news for TNG fans, which is basically everyone in the world. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, and of course, you will have to wait a while. This is season three. Remember, because we're halfway through season two right now. But so that'll be sometime eh, next year. So uh, you can watch that uh, cast announcement over on YouTube. Uh, there's very little details. What you do get in that video is um, some uh, video of Picard writing on a writing on a note card and voiceovers from each of, each of those actors in turn. Then at the very, very end, at the very end, you get um, uh, Riker talking to Picard, and I forget what he says. He said, oh, he says, aren't we a little overdue for a good old-fashioned road trip? And then you see a shot of both of them uh, brandishing their phasers. Looks like it's going to be a little bit of an, act, of an action thing. Um, and yeah, very exciting. Uh, the, the fandom collectively lost their minds. Uh, <clears throat> yours truly included. I am personally extremely excited to see that. I think it will work in the context of Star Trek Picard. And uh, I think it will be really, really good for the franchise and for the series and for the fans. Now. It isn't just the actors that are going to be appearing uh, in, in the series either. So um, I've talked about Dave Blast before. He's one of the produc production designer, I believe, on Star Trek Picard. He, um, he also uh, added that it's not just going to be the cast, but also uh, some of the behind-the-scenes people are going to be names that you recognize. And just, it's like getting the band back together. So he says... Uh, not only will there be many familiar faces in front of the camera, but behind the scenes, we have many of the visual artists who help bring the Star Trek The Next Generation back to life again. The final episodes of season two and then season three, this is going to be epic. Uh, he, he popped up a, a, an image with, the, with some of the names of the people and the ones that you will definitely recognize. Darren Docterman, Dr Doug Drexler, John Eaves, um, uh, Mike Okuda, Dan Curry. These are huge, huge names in Star Trek production, and they're all going to be involved in uh, Picard season three. So um, if you are not caught up on Picard, now might be a time uh, to, to do that and, and figure out what they're, what they're all up to. Uh, of course, season three is going to be the last uh, of Star Trek Picard. Looks like it's going to be a good one. Uh, look out for that sometime in 2023. I think we don't have a we don't have a date yet, so we'll see. All right, so that's Star Trek um, Picard, which is going on now. So I think we just had season six. We have another, I think, four episodes, and then when that finishes, it's Strange New Worlds. I mean, there's a lot. There's so much going on here that Star Trek fans are going to love because, of course, Strange New Worlds, they're sort of touting as the one that the fans asked for this, right? So over the last uh, couple of weeks, actually, and um, sorry, I'm conflating a couple weeks worth of news since I wasn't, uh, it wasn't here last week, um, but we've got a series of teaser trailers for each of the uh, new characters that we're going to have on the bridge crew of the Enterprise. Uh, and then we also have a full-length trailer as well. So I'm not going to go through each of the character trailers, uh, but definitely uh, worth watching each of them because they give you a little bit of a backstory, just a little bit of a taste of what their personality is going to be like. They put those trailers out on social media I've done a thread of them all on our Twitter uh, account. So if you go to uh, go to Twitter and go to at Daily Trek News, the pinned tweet there up at the top has got a thread starting with Ahura and going all the way down through Pike. Um, you can you can watch each of those trailers um, um, in sequence. It's really good. Uh, and then of course we've got um, the official trailer from Star Trek Strange New Worlds, um, which gives us even more sort of confirmation that it's going to be episodic uh, stories of the week, etc. Uh, I think most people are going to really like the trailer. Um, <laughs> there is There are some compromising scenes with uh, some of the actors uh, 
if you want to see Ensign Mount shirtless, that's the trailer for you. Uh, I have heard, uh, incidentally, that there was some footage that they showed at Mission Chicago. I haven't seen that. That might come out, I don't know, soon. I'm not sure. But certainly, uh, now would be a really good time if you do not want to have anything spoiled to remember to mute things like Star Trek Strange New Worlds and hashtag Strange New Worlds uh, on social media because um, people will be talking about it. So anyway, uh, I will have, uh, in addition to the link to the thread of the character trailers, I'll also have a link to that new um, Strange New Worlds trailer. We'll do that down below uh, in the show notes here. Uh, but it's on YouTube. If you search for Strange New Worlds on YouTube, you'll find it. It's very easy. Okay. So that, so we had... I like that the, the the cast announcement for Picard season three. We have also had uh, just a ton of trailers for Strange New Worlds, um, but also uh, we've also had some behind the scenes footage from To the Journey. Now uh, I'm guessing that everyone who's watching this probably knows what that is because To the Journey is the crowdsourced, crowdfunded. Star Trek Voyager documentary that um, is being done by the same group that did um, What We Left Behind, the DS9 documentary. And very famously, it was the uh, high, what is, what was it? It was a record-breaking Kickstarter campaign. Was it Kickstarter or, or Indiegogo? I can't remember which one it was. They raised uh, well over a million dollars crowdfunded for the Star Trek Voyager documentary. Uh, and they've released, it's like six minutes of behind the scenes footage. And there are the stars of the show. Uh, Kate Mulgrew is there, Robert Beltran is there, Tim Russ is there. They've even got some commentary from some of the producers and people like George Takei as well. And so that gives you a, a really good little look at what how it's coming along. And if you were one of the backers, um, which almost everyone was, I think, uh, you'll be glad to see how that's coming along. Now, we haven't, uh, to my knowledge, had a release date or anything like that, uh, but certainly it appears that it's coming along and we've been told it's due this year. So go and check that out. And of course, I will put a link down below too. So some of the other big news that's coming out, not just... Um, uh, the TV shows, but also in gaming, Star Trek Online has announced their uh, latest season, which is coming out uh, in May. So it's coming out a little bit after Strange New World starts, May 10th, I believe. It's coming out on PC and then June uh, on consoles. And it's going to be called Stormfall. Now, if you uh, recall the last one that came out, whose name I can't recall, I apologize. Uh, the big announcement was that Kate Mulgrew would be voicing her character, uh, Admiral Janeway, but also Mirror Janeway. Uh, she's gonna be back. She's gonna be back in this part of uh, Star Trek Online. Um, and uh, with another surprise too, and it's very exciting if you haven't read this. So um, let me just make sure I get the details right. So uh, following up on the last uh, episode, Redshift, Stormfall takes players on a rescue mission in the Mirror Universe alongside epic characters including Admiral Janeway, Kate Mulgrew, Admiral Lita, Chase Masterson, uh, and introducing an Andorian rebel named Rayit, who is played by fan favorite Noah Avabot Katz from Star Trek Discovery. So it's great to see him uh, joining the voice cast there alongside, of course, his wife, Mary Wiseman, who is returning to Star Trek Online as Captain Killy. So you can go and watch a trailer for that uh, now as well. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, once again, Star Trek Online is free to play. It takes basically nothing except downloading the software to try it out. And um, it's really good. So you've got it on a PC if you've got a Windows machine. And you can also get it on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So check that out. Uh, and also the trailer and... Yeah, that'll be coming out next month. Okay, right. So that's kind of, uh, I mean, <laughs> there's not a ton of news, but it's pretty monumental news this week. Um, and I'm going to shift gears really quick before I start getting into all of the other stuff, the poll and so forth, because 
um, it's been kind of a tough week for uh, Star Trek fans because we've actually had uh, three members of our Star Trek family who have passed away in the last couple of weeks. And I want to make sure that I uh, tell you about them and tell you where you can find out more information about them as well. So um, the first is Marvin J. Chomsky. He was an Emmy winner and directed three Star Trek episodes. He was 92 years old. That was a report out of Variety. He passed away on Monday, March 28th. Um, he directed a number of things all across Hollywood, but uh, as far as Star Trek that you would know, he directed And the Children Shall Lead, Day of the Dove, and the second to last episode, All Our Yesterdays. Um, that one, uh, uh, T. Rick Jones wrote a really great obituary for him that's available on dailystartreknews.com. So I'd encourage you to read that and read a little more background about him as well. Um, the next person that I want to tell you about is uh, Estelle Harris, who actually most people are probably going to know her from Seinfeld. She played uh, George Costanza's mom on Seinfeld, but she was also uh, a guest actor and an episode of Voyager uh, called Sacred Ground. This is one where Captain Janeway had to go through a ritual to save Kess. I don't, I don't remember that one, but, um, but yes, uh, Estelle Harris was um, <laughs> pretty notable in Hollywood. She was very recognizable, especially after her turn on uh, Seinfeld. Um, her co-star there, Jason Alexander, had some really lovely things to say about her. He said. One of my favorite people has passed, my TV mama, Estelle Harris. The joy of playing with her and relishing her glorious laughter is a treat. I adore you, Estelle. Love to your family, serenity now and always. So that was very sweet. Uh, and then finally, just um, earlier this week on April 5th, um, Nehemiah Persoff, who has just an impressive, it's something like, 200 film and television credits, according to IMDb. Um, he was 102 years old. This was reported by Variety earlier this week. Uh, now, he just had the single guest role on Star Trek The Next Generation. He played uh, something Toph on, uh, Paylor Toph in The Most Toys alongside um Paul Rubin, uh, sorry, Saul Rubinek. Um, but that was just so one of so, so, so many credits that he had, not just on television, but also in film and um, on the stage as well. He had a really, really impressive career. Um, and uh, all of these obituaries, they're available. You can read them in full on dailystartreknews.com. Thank you to Chris Peterson and T. Rick Jones for writing those up for me. Um, please go and read them. And of course, I'll link them below so you can learn more about uh, all of them. Okay, so that is um, that is the news really today. Uh, I do want to just briefly remind you, uh, so, uh, so if you're watching here on YouTube and you do that on a regular basis, you probably will have noticed that I wasn't here last week. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I was at WonderCon and um, there is audio available for that. So you may have missed it. If you are a YouTuber and you don't listen to the, to the uh, audio podcast, you may have missed it. So I just wanted to direct you towards that. Uh, I was on a panel talking about uh, Star Trek in the pandemic uh, and how things have changed. Um, and I was on the panel with uh, uh, James Kerwin, John Champion, and... Um, uh, Jessica Lynn Verdi and Larry Nemechek, and just it was a great conversation. So we've got the audio from that is in the podcast feed for Daily Star Trek News. So if you're not already subscribed, you can go and subscribe and you can listen to that uh, latest episode. It's the one just before this one. Okay, um, so yeah, like I said, that's the news for this week. Uh, I just want to remind you all, if you're watching, that this show is supported by our Patreon supporters. So you can find out about how all of that works at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. Uh, also, don't forget that there's a poll running in the chat. Uh, there's a poll running in the chat and over on Twitter. And I'm actually curious. This one is it's not a joke one this time. I'm just curious. I want to know how many Star Trek conventions you would go to in a year if you could, like if there was no restrictions. So you have a choice between uh, nope, not ever, <laughs> uh, one or two, uh, between three and five, or I'd go to one every week if I could. Um, so let me know. I'm kind of curious. 
Um, okay, so, right. All right, so listen, show and tell this week is kind of dumb, but I hope you'll like it. <laughs> um, let's see. Da, 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 da. So, um, okay, so for Christmas, uh, I I really like... <laughs> I can. I just looked at myself on my preview for the video, and um, I, I, I've gone a little red because I'm a little embarrassed. But I really loved Light Bright when I was a kid, and I got one for Christmas. They still make them. Um, and so, one thing that I worked on um, yesterday while I was watching uh, <laughs> Star Trek IV, the one with the whales, it was. Oh wait, hang on. <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's so dumb. It took me ages as well. It took me like two hours to get the lettering right. But I had a, such a I had such a tremendous amount of fun doing that. Um, the only reason it's not in the background of um, my shot here is because it's actually got a pretty like small timer. Um, yeah, for those of you listening at home, it's I I I made Star I made Star Trek logo including the TNG little delta on my light bright. Um, so like it it can stand up, but it has a very short timer. So I'm gonna knock everything off right now. No, that's not gonna work. Okay. Anyway, so I would encourage you all. <laughs> I don't get a commission from Light Bright, but if you liked these when you were a kid, they're very affordable and a tremendous amount of fun. So anyway, that's my that's my uh, nerdy Star Trek show and tell for today. Yay. Um, all right, let's do the poll. <laughs> All right, you guys have a minute or so uh, left in the in the chat on YouTube. I'm gonna go and check on Twitter. Let's see what we got. Um, okay. So, like I said, uh, the poll today is: if money were object, how many Star Trek conventions would you attend in a year? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna skip to the spoilerific part and say nobody. Nobody at all has said zero, which is um, great. Although I, I, I was actually expecting one or two. Uh, Star Trek conventions are not everybody's cup of tea. Um, I actually think that was interesting. Um, we talked about it a little bit at WonderCon, actually. You know, one of the benefits of the pandemic was that we... Wait, I'm going to back up. There are no benefits to a pandemic. However... Um, Star Trek conventions are pretty inaccessible for a lot of people, especially like if you, for instance, you, Chicago this weekend, if you can't get to Chicago, like you can't go. Um, but where, you know, the conventions couldn't happen and people were forced to figure out how to do like an online option that just increased accessibility to those type of events for so many people. Um, you know, what's great about a Zoom Star Trek convention you can turn your camera off and nobody has to look at you. And if you're just having one of those days, then you can go to a Star Trek convention without actually having to interact with any people, which uh, I think we all have those days. Anyway, so it surprises me that nobody has said they don't want to go to any, but um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, in the lead at the moment, uh, if money were no object, most people are saying 45% of people who responded said uh, one to two conventions a year. 30% uh, said three to five conventions a year. And 25%, which is actually higher than I thought, is one a week if I could. So basically, you can't get enough. That's pretty impressive. That would take a lot of stamina. Right, I'm going to end it here. <laughs> I'm going to end it here on, on YouTube. So, right. So this is actually really interesting. Um, and I, I wonder what it says about the people that watch Star Trek themed live streams on YouTube. Uh, because in first place with 38% of the vote is one a week if I could. You guys are hardcore. I don't even think I could do that. Um, 
in second place with 23, actually tied for third place is one or two to three to five and, um, and 15%, I don't know how many that works out, actually says you couldn't pay me to go. I was actually, uh, okay, you, uh, you guys have surprised me and also Twitter has surprised me. Um, if it were me and money was no object, I would, pr I would probably be in the one to two. I really like a Star Trek convention, especially, you know, uh, if forgetting to see people that you haven't seen in person. Hugging is wonderful. I just want to say that hugging is great. Um, but, uh, pers personally, I tend to like do like, I also tend to kind of work the show too. It's really, really tiring. Um, I don't think I could do more than one or two a year, but that's just me. Anyway, we've done the news. We've done show and tell. We've done the poll. Um, and I, I think that's it. Well, uh, I'm going to wrap up the main show, but don't forget, if you're here on YouTube with me live, uh, stick around. We'll do some other little chat at the end. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, that's it for this week in Daily Star Trek News. Thank you for listening slash watching. <laughs> uh, just a reminder that if you are listening to this on the podcast, then you should come join us on YouTube because it's a tremendous amount of fun. Um, remember, you can find all of this week's stories and last week's stories and a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't get to cover, um, including uh, trivia, history, our events listing, all of that stuff is available at Daily Star Trek News. Dot com. Um, if you also want all of this information just in your inbox every day, you can do that at dailystartreknews.com as well. Just go to uh, either the main page, usually there's a little pop-up, or you can do dailystartreknews.com forward slash contact. All we need is your email and we'll uh, deliver it straight to you every weekday morning. Um, Anyway, thank you for, for listening. Um, this show is produced by me, Allison Pitt, and all of our stories today were written by Chris Peterson, Marina Kravchuk, Jack Brown, T. Rick Jones, and David Powell. Uh, today's show was supported by people like you through Patreon. You can find out more and add your support at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. I will be back next week uh, with more of the Star Trek news you need to know. I'm Allison Pitt. Live long and prosper. <sighs> okay, guys. Thank you for sticking around. For those of you who are here, thank you for being here because uh, it was a little bit of a screwed up schedule today. Um, I got invited to lunch in Beverly Hills uh, with some very cool people, which makes me sound completely insufferable. Um, but I, I, it was a tremendous amount of fun and I felt incredibly cool. What's really funny, um, if you ever come to Los Angeles, um, Beverly Hills sounds like really like, <laughs> like, woo, you know, and Rodeo Drive and all of that stuff. Um, it's a totally sensible place to go. I drove up from Orange County and, you know, uh, the traffic wasn't bad. And mind you, it was a Sunday. Um, you know, it's pretty sensible. The parking was not too expensive. And, you know, we sat and had lunch at a really nice deli and it was like completely normal uh which was kind of odd anyway it was a tremendous amount of fun and i'm sorry that i delayed the show for that but it was an opportunity that i couldn't pass up so anyway yeah so listen <laughs> there is a major piece of news that happened this week that uh and last week that i did not talk about on the show and we did not publish on the website and i do just want to address it really briefly um, and that is the Star Trek NFTs. And first, let me explain to you why I haven't covered it on the show and why I'm not really talking about it um, on the web either. Um, I know that uh, that that particular topic was not going to be received very well from our audience. So that was not something that I chose to cover. I personally don't think that it's... Um, <sighs> right for the type of people that we speak to um, on Daily Star Trek News. So uh, as an editorial decision, we decided not to cover it. Um, however, uh, I do just want to really quickly address it. And especially because 
you know, I like to add context to things. So I want to just provide for those people who don't know what NFTs are. I have done the tiniest, tiniest amount of research. And I just want to point you to a couple of places that you might be able to get some more information so that you can be informed about the discourse instead of maybe just jumping in there and having a big cow. Um, so the history on this is that Paramount Global has partnered with a company called Recur, um, and they are selling themed NFTs based on their uh, IPs, and Star Trek is the first one. So uh, Star Trek is the first one, but it's not going to be the only one. Uh, this is the announcement or part of the announcement from StarTrek.com. They said, um, today Paramount Global, this was on April 6th. So yeah, it was uh, last Wednesday. Um, today, Paramount Global and Recur announced that Star Trek will be the first NFT digital collection to drop from their multi-year partnership to bring Paramount's beloved entertainment brands and characters to the metaverse. Fans will be able to access Star Trek digital collectibles starting April 9th. Um, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. Um, through this a uh, fan-focused platform, Paramount and Recur, have created a unified environment where fans can buy, collect, and trade NFTs as digital collectibles across Paramount's leading portfolio of brands, excuse me, including Paramount Pictures, Nickelodeon, Comedy Central, MTV, BET, CBS, Showtime Networks, Inc., and more. Star Trek is the first franchise to launch and will be followed with collectibles from Nickelodeon and Paramount Pictures. Paramount.xyz allows fans to build a community, engage with peers, and unlock new, innovative, and interactive experiences with properties and the brands they love. Um, so this thing is called Star Trek Continuum. Uh, we've now missed the first uh, offering, which uh, went live yesterday morning, and it ran for 24 hours. Uh, it does not appear to have sold out. They have sold out um, some of them, but not not all of them by the looks of it. And uh, basically what it was, was a drop of <sighs> digital starship things. I'm sorry. I will say that I don't really understand NFTs. And so I don't want you to take what I'm saying today as any kind of professional advice. I'm trying to give you some context over what's going on. Largely speaking, they're selling it as digital collectibles. There's going to be kind of a metaverse thing. They're at some point in the future, they're gonna you're gonna be able to collect uh, crew and other things. Yeah, so season zero, which dropped yesterday, was collect your ship. Season one is assemble your crew. Season two is complete mission and earn rare NFTs. Season three is What's next? Um, I, I don't really understand it. Um, to to my mind, I mean, the 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 backlash for all of this has been swift and violent, at least on um, social media. The um, there's a couple of different arguments going on there, but one of which is that uh, artificial scarcity, which is more or less what NFTs are based on, um, is antithetical to the rules of Star Trek. Um, I. I, I personally think that's true, but, um, you know, there's also the other, the other flip side of it that uh, Star Trek first and foremost is a money-making franchise for Paramount. And that's something that you kind of have to get your head around. Um, so what happened with this announcement? Um, they announced it publicly. There were a couple of official articles about it. Uh, several podcasters and other outlets said, hey, they, they came to us and we didn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. So there was a lot of that going on. Um, additionally, Anthony Rapp came out um, expressing his support of it. And he got really, really harassed for that. And I don't think that's right. Um, but he actually did some research afterwards. And if you go onto his Twitter page, um, his handle there is at Albino Kid. He's also done a, a very thorough explanation, which I think he did not need to do. Um, but I think it was good that he did do it, um, explaining his position on the whole business. Um, right. So... What I do want to quickly go into, and I will pop some links in the show notes once this is done. I probably should have done this to begin with. Sorry. Um, there are two pretty, um, the two main things that people tend to complain about with NFTs and the two things that they're really, um, I think, people getting upset in the Star Trek community over 
are, uh, number one, it's kind of an art, like artificial scarcity. I think I mentioned that. And, and is it a pyramid scheme? Um, and also the impact on the environment. And so those two things, there's actually um, investopedia.com has got a couple of really good explainer articles that are... Um, that talk about what NFTs are, and they address those two issues very um, specifically. Um, the long and short of it is that um, in terms of investments, NFTs are not considered assets, <laughs> um, and they are digital. I mean, here's, here's what Investopedia says to the question, are NFTs a good investment? <laughs> they said, Investing in an asset just because it's tokenized into an NFT is not a good idea. NFTs by themselves are not investments, so make sure to understand the value of the underlying asset that you're buying before you purchase the NFT. So an NFT is essentially a tokenized piece of artwork that you can prove your ownership of, but at the end of the day, it's still a digital artwork. Um, the other thing that they talk about is, uh, is the environment... Um, and again, this is from Investopedia. So uh, where da, 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 da. a single NFT transaction on the Ethereum platform emits almost 150 kilograms of carbon dioxide, <sighs> equivalent to 331,000 visa transactions or or nearly 25,000 hours of watching YouTube. It's equivalent to the electricity used by an average US household over just over nine days. Uh, and it's to do with the way that the blockchain is all set up and I don't fully understand it. And my understanding is that things like Ethereum are looking for ways to make the environmental impact uh, less noticeable. Um, but it's still true that blockchain fueled things are not great for the environment right now. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out was that Recur actually uses something called layer two technology called Polygon, and they are billed as a much better for the environment <laughs> um, marketplace than something direct like Ethereum. However, Polygon is based on the Ethereum blockchain. And so even though Polygon itself is not um, as bad, it is still contributing to that marketplace. I will put all the links for all of these um, down below, but the long and short of it is for the, for the two main issues that um, most people are concerned about with NFTs, which is the impact on the environment and you know whether it's actually worth shelling out for something like this. Personally, I will not be investing in Star Trek NFTs. Uh, I leave it up to you, your judgment. Um, but if you have been seeing these things around the internet, that is the context of what's going on. Um, it's also been tried before. The Roddenberry Foundation tried this before and had swift backlash too. Um, and the upshot is the, uh, I don't know, it's kind of had mixed results. I'm kind of surprised. So so the if you want to check this out for yourself, Star Trek Continuum is at StarTrek.xyz, and it will be Paramount.xyz in the future. Uh, their season zero release uh, the Admiral Pack, which was $250 each, they sold uh, 5,000 units and they're sold out. The Captain Pack, which was also $250, um, at, which was the algorithmically generated uh, Starship NFT, uh, it just says completed. It's, it sold 3,381. So regardless, it was you know pretty lucrative for them. I don't know if it will be considered a success. And and we will we will see what happens with that. Um, I'm going to stop talking now because, like I said before, I am not a um, an expert on NFTs. I am very on the fence. It's not for me. Uh, but it has uh, kind of lit the whole fandom on fire um, this week, and it's uh, been kind of a big deal. Anyway. Like I said, I'm gonna shut up now. All uh, right, did I leave anything out? Yeah, uh, I'm curious, actually, they uh, apparently did an entire panel 
at Star Trek Mission Chicago talking about uh, the Star Trek continuum, which featured Anthony Rapp and Sneakwa Martin Green. Um, I'm, I haven't heard how that went or anything like that. So, I don't know. All right. I want to say hi to some people in the chat instead of... <laughs> I've gone all awkward now. Hi, everybody. Uh, hi, BC. Thank you for alamorating me. Um, Andrew, uh, Andrew in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you finally, finally got the package. I am sorry it took me so, so long um, to, to fulfill that, but yeah. I'm seeing a lot of uh, friendly faces today. Thank you again for turning up, even though it was so, uh, so late. Yeah. I like, uh, I, clearly there's a few of you who also are Light Bright fans. Uh, light Bright was one of those things that uh, when I was a kid, I had a Light Bright um, and I never had enough pegs and I never got any new designs. So it was one of those things to like, cause what they have. Um, so I did this freehand, I'm not bragging, but um, normally it comes with a, a black sheet of paper with like a map of what, where to po poke things in. Um, and what basically once you use that map once, it's not very useful anymore. It starts to tear and it starts to be awful. Um, but yeah, uh, as a as a grown up, I'm like, yeah, I could buy. You can even buy extra pegs now. This is amazing. Uh, I was actually talking about this at lunch. How there's a whole generation of people that are like my age, possibly yours if you're watching. Um, they're the same people that are out there buying the Playmates uh, Star Trek figures now because they came out when we were kids and our parents were too stingy and wouldn't take us to Toys R Us. And now we're like, we got grown up money. We're going to buy a light braid. I'm going to buy it. I just catch. <laughs> I'm going to go buy all the action figures. Yeah, it's uh, tremendously fun. I will say, totally off topic, don't buy new mousetrap. The, the the board game where you build the thing, totally not worth it. Unless they come up with the like old, like retro mousetrap where they actually have like the wood and metal pieces, it's not worth it. <sighs> so Jay Galloway in the chat says the best Star Trek convention is Star Trek Cruise. Um, I can't, uh, confirm nor deny because I haven't been on the cruise yet. Um, I would love to go on the cruise, although I will admit that cruises still freak me out with the whole, you know, pandemic business. Um, but yeah, from the, from what I've seen, it looks tremendous amount of fun. One of the most fun things that I always loved about Star Trek Las Vegas was that you're sort of a captive audience inside the hotel because the the hotel is there and the convention center is there. Um, you don't get that with something like Mission Chicago because there are hotels in the area, but it's not like all in one place, right? Not so with the cruise. The cruise is, I mean, very captive audience because, you know, you can't leave the ship. But um, yeah, I would like to go on that one day. Uh, and by the way, if you are at all on Twitter or something, um, go and check out. There's been some really, really great pictures. Star Trek Mission Chicago looked like it was a really, really great time for the people that went there. Uh, <laughs> hi, Thomas in the chat. Thomas in the chat says, hi, am I late? You are late, but I'm also late. So it depends if you're, if you're asking for, for the normal 2 PM live stream, then yes, quite. Uh, if you're late for this, well, you're also late for this one. Cause I started at six, but still we're glad you're here. <laughs> uh, Jay Galloway also in the chat says ticket to ride is a fun board game. Uh, okay, we're not going to go off onto a total board game tangent, but I agree. Ticket to Ride is a fun board game, and I do actually have it downstairs. I have played it, not recently, but I have played it, and it's good. Um, 
Uh, War Dog Hyman in the in the chat says uh, Mohammed Noor, uh, who's who's often in this chat. So if you guys know who he is, first of all, if you don't know who he is, please go and look him up because he's super super smart. He's also BioTrekkie. Um, the BioTrekkie explains on YouTube and uh, doing BioTrekkie with the Admiral uh, Jane Brooke from uh, Star Trek Discovery. He's great. Um, he gathered a bunch of the hashtag chat pack for a picture at Chicago, which is wonderful to see. Um, and yes, uh, Tech with Todd also says, Dr. Noor is brilliant. He absolutely is. He's uh, honestly the, the just the kindest person. I've never met him in real life. I'm very much looking forward to one day. He's, um, yes, incredibly kind. So, all right. Okay, you guys have one more minute. I feel like I'm talking to my children. That's what I always used to do with them when we had to leave the park. It was two more minutes and then one more minute. And by the way, if you have kids, young kids especially, this is perfect because kids don't know how long a minute is. <laughs> so you can make it as long or as short if you want. Um, anyway, um, yeah, you have like one more minute before I'm gonna sign off because it's late and I gotta go cook dinner. So yeah, <laughs> yes, Tech with Todd, you are getting a countdown. Right, I'm heading off. Um, listen, so this is the, the remnants of my, uh, my, my coffee from Starbucks on um, whatever road it is in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep the cup forever. I'm not going to. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> Thomas uh, in the chat says, what are, what are you cooking? I am cooking a uh, Fiesta turkey skillet, which is uh, a little bit of ground turkey and some cabbage with some taco seasoning. It's very, very good. Um, and uh, yeah, oh, uh, okay. Uh, and I'll give Wardock uh, some cool points there for hanging out with uh, Dr. Noor. We'll have a reunion at some point. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that and uh, yeah. Anyway, I will sit here and yammer on for the rest of the afternoon, uh, and I'm not going to do that. So thank you again uh, for for all of you who have tuned in. Uh, I know there was a bit of a pain with the time change. I will be back next week, and yes, I know next week is Easter. I will be here on Easter Sunday, so if you... Uh, if you want to join, uh, I would love to see you. Anyway, thank you again for listening. Um, it's been real, and I hope you guys enjoy everything you're doing this week, and I will speak to you very, very soon. <laughs> Thanks again. Bye.